everybody. Welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. No, today's... <laughs> oh my god. Hey everybody, welcome to Fab Fit Friday. That's what happens when I have FFF and FFF. Um, hi Janie, welcome. Um, today, I have a couple things I want to share with you guys. And what I'm going to do here is, first I'm going to bring my ditto form over. Okay. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is my ditto form is really in good shape in terms of being my body double. Um, Carol from Ditto Form came um, to my house on her way. You know, she goes and does scan appointments for people who would like a ditto form and she happened to be coming through my area which was super exciting because I haven't seen her since um, I think I want to say it was right before the pandemic really hit in 2020 so it's been well over a year almost two years so it was really really nice to see her um, plus we got to spend some time together we worked on fixing my ditto form and we went out to lunch it was really really fun um, hi, Mary and Diane. Welcome. So I'm very, very excited about it. And as you can see, um, if you check out my Instagram or any pictures of me wearing this top, because I did wear it and I posted on Instagram, you can see the, the fit of it now is um, almost identical to, to me. So I'm very excited about that. I have to make two covers for it. Hi, Diane. Welcome. I have to make two covers. The first cover is going to be a knit cover that I can draw my princess seam style lines on. And then I'm going to drape a new non-stretch cover to go over it. And this time I'm going to use flannel backed satin in a cream color and the reason why I'm using that fabric is because um, there are no collapsible shoulders on the ditto form and because I have the benefit of seeing what my you know my shoulder and the very top of my bicep is doing it makes it very broad across for me because I'm built like a linebacker so um, I think having fabric that's a little bit slippery will make it easier to slide um, garments on and off. So I'm very excited about this. I have an old knit sheet in a gray color that'll be perfect to sew the knit version. And then, like I said, I will be working on the woven version, which I will share with you probably next week. So that's my first exciting thing. Hi, Judy. Welcome, ladies. Um, and here in Connecticut, if you have trouble hearing me or if some stuff happens with my stream I apologize there's a really bad storm um, blowing through today there's a lot of wind and rain and um, I was super excited I went hiking this morning and I was able to get out and back before it really started raining and before the wind ramped up so I was very happy about that um, but anyway so that's the first thing I want to share with you I'm very excited about my ditto form the next thing I want to talk about is my new jeans pattern. And if you've been following along with me, you may have seen the episode where I showed how to construct the whole thing without a fly front. Now this gave me a false sense of security in terms of knowing how I was going to actually do the fly. So during the week, I've been working on the fly pieces. I updated the pocket bags as well to make them deeper. Um, and I was like super excited because I thought I had the whole construction figured out. And then when I went to sew the right and left legs together after putting the fly pieces on, I realized it was not correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig backwards and look at my original pair of jeans so I can show you um, what, well first I'm going to show you what I have and then I'm going to show you what I um need to change it to I guess so let me just switch my view here let me see 
All right, so let's push some of this stuff back here. I don't know if that's sticking out so far. Okay, so let me just show you here. I was super excited because I made my fly pieces. Let me just put them side by side here so you can see. Um, all right, so this is what it's looking like right now. Let me, let me just get this closed up oh, uh, and a little bit brighter so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, also I'm going to move myself over here so I'm not in the way. Okay, so what I did and I was really excited about it was I thought I had this is how the right fly piece looks and I've already installed the snaps there's two snaps below the, the waist yoke and I had those installed and the way it attaches is with this little short half it's almost like a half of a fly piece so these snap together okay and then what happens is up at the top buttons are sewn here and then you'll have you know buttonholes showing on the top to make to finish this closure and I was really excited about it and then I realized there's a few things that are funked up about this first of all when I measured the position of my front pocket you can see how close it is to the center front edge so I'm gonna have to actually move that over probably another inch so my top, my fly top stitching is not in the way of the pocket. So that's the first thing I'm going to have to do. And the reason why I didn't notice that um, is because with the fly or, or the, the, the fly or zipper, well, there's no zipper, but the fly extension is a half an inch on this pattern. So it looked like I had plenty of room, but then after I constructed it, I don't so I'm gonna be sliding the pocket over that's number one and then if we look at it from the inside everything seems to be going okay here however um, first I pressed my allowances down like it looks on the original pair that I'm copying um, but then I realized that they're actually up and if you remember when I constructed the, my first pair I sewed the yoke onto the front you know the, the public side of the jean and I turned it under and fit it in here and that does work great but in actuality and on the original pair the um, facing is actually sewn on last on the inside of the garment and the, the I found that out or I realized that that was in fact the issue because when this is folded over like this okay then this here the little allowance for the center front of the yoke would fold this way right and then I would you know sew that over the top of it but when I looked at the finished or the, the original pair this top edge of this little fly piece is actually enclosed or sewn into the seam so let me show you um, what I'm doing here I'm basically now taking apart these jeans so I can get this construction finally um, figured out and it's very cool. I have to say I'm having a lot of fun with this because, um, you know, it's just interesting construction. Um, it's, you know, it's not boring or interesting or, uh, you know, it's not boring and it's just completely different. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. But like I said, I thought I had it figured out and then I realized I didn't. So if we look at this, this piece is actually sewn on last. So the outside of the yoke is sewn on okay so and now I have it sewn on so you can see here that this is actually the way they did it they sewed the outside of the yoke onto the top of the leg okay so I'm good there 
But then what they do is I picked apart the top here and they what we're going to do is I'm going to fold down the top edge of my waist yoke. So this whole top edge is going to get folded down like this. Okay, and then I'm going to have the right side of um, the, the facing of the yoke is what's going to stick up. So if you look here, you can see the right side of the yoke is sticking up there. Okay, so I'm thinking about this and, you know, from the inside, you have all of the wrong fabric showing. So what I may do instead is if I finish the top edge of the yoke piece with a bias piece of woven cotton, then that's what would show here. So if I'm looking at this right here, okay, so this, this is the right side of the yoke facing just sticking up and the, the yoke itself is folded down. Okay, so I had it backwards. I had, um, when I sewed it, I sewed the waistband on wrong side face out and then I put the, the I put the, the facing on the right side of the garment. So this is gonna give us some benefits. Well, first of all, if I finish this edge with a, a bias cotton strip of fabric, then I can put it wrong sides together so I have a, the right side of the fabric here. So that's the first thing that I'm going to change about this design. Um, but then the other thing is if we look at the bottom edge here, by putting the facing on last, I can press the seam allowances of the pocket bags and the yoke up and then this will be down and that cuts the the, um, the bulk of having all of those seam allowances going in the same direction. So I have to change that. And then the last thing that I, I'm, I'm looking at here, at the top of the fly, or the halfway point of the fly at this seam, there's no top stitching. Okay, you can see it's just a plain seam there. But this was folded under and sewn down across here. I took it apart so I could see. Okay, so this, let me just make that so it's, okay, so this actually gets sewn to here and then flipped down. So I'm thinking the way they did this was they actually, let me just take this out a little bit more, hold on. I do not have to look for a seam ripper because I have plenty now. But if I were to take this out a little bit more, so see, deconstructing something is the best way to figure out how it was sewn together. Because sometimes when you're looking at a finished garment, it's hard to tell um, what actually, you know, what the actual steps were. Because you can see. And here, this is this edge is caught in this fold. So I just want to take it apart to see what we're doing. I hope you guys don't think this is boring. Um, I really thought I had it figured out, I'll be honest. But I just want to take this apart some more to see. But in the end, I really think this is going to be a fun pair of jeans to sew together once I figure out the quirks of how it goes together and I can write the instructions for you guys. Right, so I'm just trying to take apart this stitching here. Alright, so let's look at this. See, because another thing there is no top stitching down this edge um, here, but there's, there's stitching here. So how did that get there? I don't know. Let me just 
take this apart a little bit so I can see what's happening here. All right, so here is how they did it. I'm guessing there's got to be two rows of stitching in here, I'm guessing. Okay, so I think what they did was... Let me see. Let me just take it out a little bit more. Oh, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Thank you for telling me I'm not boring. Sometimes I need to be reassured. I want to have these things... You know, sometimes I feel like I should know all the answers before I come on with you guys, but um, in this case, it was part of my process. See, this is really interesting. It's sewn to here. See that? So it's it's sewn to it, but the stitching's not showing. So I'm, of course, I can't really take it apart because of the buttonholes are in there. Um, so my guess is, let's see, I'm just going to rip out one of these buttonholes. I'm really doing these jeans in now. Let me just cut them because I want to put them together the best way possible. All right, so I'm just going to pick out this bottom buttonhole so I can see what's going on in there. If I make a hole, I don't care. Oh, Diane says I'm not boring too. Thank you, Diane. All right, so it seems to me like Hmm. All right, so I'm going to take this out some more. All right, I really just want to, okay, I'm just going to cut it right along here because I want to see what that edge is doing. All right, so this edge right here And this edge right here, just trying to see, okay, so there's my seam allowance. Maybe they sewed the short ends of the facing together first. All right, so there's, all right. this apart a little bit farther here all right let's see all right so let's look in here obviously the the end of the yoke has to be sewn to the end of the the facing let me just see here I just want to free this here. The buttonholes also catch the seam allowance. That's why I can't just... All right. All right, let's look at this. Okay, so here are the two ends. Now there is stitching on the outside. Oh, all right, let me just... All right, let me just hold on. if I can get a better view here. Hold on. All right, let me see. Get a better view here. All right, is that better? Oh, okay, I think that's better. All right, so Jamie, oh. Okay, so I moved my camera. I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, Diane wants to know if it was understitched. 
All right, well, I don't see, okay, so if, it, if this were understitched, there would be two rows of stitching. So you'd have one row um, would be the seam, and then the next row would be the understitching. So there isn't any understitching here. So my guess is, My guess is that so if I open up this, it's almost like it was sewn right sides together and then turned in. But that still doesn't explain why you see, see what I don't understand is why do we see stitching here, but we don't see it here, but it obviously is sewn together like that. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So the only way, this must have been stitched See, and this is turned in. So let me, let me just cut this off here for a second. All right, so let's pretend this is like this. And then, so this edge, let's see, was it like this? So maybe it was sewn like this, and then when it was turned in, it was it's like that. I get that. That would sew that together, but that still doesn't explain how, unless they did understitch after they sewed just this. So maybe that is what happened, because obviously they're stitching here. Maybe this, maybe this is understitching. All right, so, all right, so let me look at this for a second. So let's look at, this. All right, and I didn't cut out my, I'm just gonna cut a piece. Let me just, I'm just gonna cut a little piece that we can use to do a sample. Yeah, Pat says it looks like it was top stitched to the seam allowance and then pressed. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am just gonna make myself a little piece that's, this is five inches. So I'm just going to make myself a five inch wide piece that we can practice with here. So let's say five inches. One, two. All right, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I'm just going to cut this like this. All right. And then. All right, so let's see. Here is move this out of the way here. All right, so here is the side that I'm trying to figure out, and I've unstitched the top part because I know that I'm just not sure about how this sews together. If it sews, I'm thinking it gets sewn to like this first but I also think I have to sew this. So the first thing is I'm gonna turn this under that little bit and I'm just gonna pin it. So we're gonna pin test this. So let me just stick some pins. So I'm turning this under a half an inch or three eighths, whatever. So that would get pressed down like that. Okay, and then if we were to sew this onto here, 
So I'm going to just pin it at a half an inch all the way down. All right, so let's pretend we sewed this. All right, so now it's sewn. Oh, except, well, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I wanna, I'm gonna finish this top edge so when I flip it, it's, it's, it's finished. So I'm not gonna worry about the wrong side. Okay, so now I've got that like that. So then, if I were to understitch this, that would be that stitching that we don't see on the right side, right? So when it's like this, okay, so that, okay, wait a minute, let me fold this part in. So this is like that. And then I think what we would do is we would finish sewing this to here. Oh, what if I sewed? Well, oh, wait a minute. It's got to be like this. So this would have to get sewn to here. So the top edge of this, let me put the point going the other way. All right, and then when it's lifted up and folded, that would give me that finished, because I see you would see the stitching there where those pins are. So I guess that is how they did it. Um, and then, of course, up here, this part here that sticks up, I'm going to finish that with a cotton strip. Okay, so that takes care of that. But then this, okay, so inside now, this, see, I can't have... Somehow, the other thing that I can't, I haven't figured out yet is, let me just take out this pin. Um, let me just take out this pin here for a second. All right, so when it's folded in like this, okay, that, I mean, that is, that could totally work, except on my original, on my, the original one, this actually looked like this. So maybe you just, maybe you just do that, like that. So see the seam allowance for the bottom of the yoke hangs down and this is just finished like that. But again, there was no top stitching across the top of this So, let me just see, let's look at that again. Okay, because see this, has a seam in it, it's sewn, and it's, it's sewn to this, I think. So maybe, so I think it was sewn on like this first, like I have it, but then I don't understand where this line of stitching goes because it was attached, it was sewn to there. So. Maybe, let me 
I'm going to take this out for a second. I'm going to take this off and see if it's possible to sew it onto that the bottom of the yoke first. Let me just see here. All right, I don't care if this bottom gets traumatized. All right, so maybe, of course I cut that, but maybe this was sewn onto here first. Like if I sewed this to here, Yeah, see, I don't see how this can be sewn. So if I were to sew this like this, so let's just pin it on. And it was only sewn to there. So this part right here, so if I sew this here, then how would I... Sew it on to maybe it's and then maybe you do this so maybe this piece is sewn on to here first then it's put together with this then maybe it's before it's attached to the rest of the waistband, it's sewn like this. I'm going to have to try all this because honestly, I, I like the way this is finished because there's no raw edges near the fly, which I think is important. All right, so then see if I have it like that, then this will, whole thing will flip in like that. So I, I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. All right, let me see something here. All right, let me just take this back out. Okay, let me see here. All right, I'm just going to leave that. All right, so that would mean that I would have to take this out, sew it to the top here first, and then attach it to here. So that's what I think I'm going to try, but I'm not going to try. Oh, Diane says this is boggling my mind. I would have to have taken every bit of it apart. Well, I honestly, I thought I had it figured out until I um, realized that this top edge was sewn under like that, and then that allowed this to then, you know, hang hang below over here, which I like that because what that does is it gives us the advantage of reducing the bulk by not pressing everything up. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a list on here. So number one, let me just make this a little less dark now. I'm going to try it. I'm not going to try it during Fab Fit Friday because um, I have to test it. But number one, I'm going to finish top edge of waistband yoke with a woven strip. Okay, so that's the first thing. So I'm going to finish the top, this top edge here. That's the first thing I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, I'm going to sew half. I'm going to call this the half fly piece, half fly to bottom edge of waistband yoke facing. And I'm going to see if I can get that to work. And then I'm going to sew, I'm going to press, 
top edge of waistband yoke down like this here. So I'm going to press this edge down. I'm going to press it down three eighths of an inch. Um, and then I'm going to sew short ends of um, yoke together and under stitch. And I think that's going to fix this side. Oh, hi, Jerry. Oh, you almost forgot it was Friday. Ugh. Um, well, I'm glad you have your grannies, though. Oh, well, I'll tell you that when you design a pattern from scratch, it doesn't come with instructions, so you're forced to, um, you're forced to make notes. So that's how I'm going to fix that side. Now, I just want to double check what's going on on the other side here. So let's look and see. This other side I think is going to be pretty easy. So here's what it looks like now. And if I look at what's going on on this other side, I think everything I've done thus far on this side is correct. So if we look at it like this, that looks good. This top stitching, I think, is going to be what holds the, the inside of the yoke together. Okay, so the top stitching you're seeing here, 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 that's to hold all of this in place. And notice on this side, you see the top stitching, whereas on the other side, you didn't see it. So I think this side is correct. Okay, so I've got the original. There's my things. I have to sew the buttons on here. Um, and then if we look at the inside, what's going to happen is, okay, this, everything I have is good. Um, so what will happen is I will press, on this side, I will just press the edge of the yoke under and we'll top stitch it in place to cover all of this because this will be pressed up and then this will just lay flat. So on this side, I'm good. So really all I have to do is fix the, um, I just have to fix the, the, the left side that's screwed up. All right, so that's where I am with my jeans. Now, the other thing I just want to show you here is I bought this kit for doing snaps, okay, and it comes in this neat little thing, and I just want to show you, if anybody's interested in doing snaps, they're ultra easy to do. Um, the one thing is, you don't want to, you want to have a separate surface that you don't mind if it gets marked up, and if you look at this really closely, let me see if I can show you here. I don't know if you can see. Let me make it a little bit lighter. Can you see all these little holes? The whole surface of this is covered with these little round circle cuts. That's from using my little eyelet cutter um, to make holes. So I always use this mat so I don't ruin my, um, you know, I don't ruin my, um, surface when I'm cutting out holes. So basically, the way you put a snap in, see first I tried it with just a double layer of cotton, but I felt like that wasn't sturdy enough, so I switched to denim. And actually my denim little short fly is interfaced. So see, the wrong side of it has this interfacing. Okay. So I would take your denim and I would still interface it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then I like to mark where my holes are gonna be. And the way, the way it worked out on this project is 
it was in the middle, like an inch away from the edge, and then I had two, you know, so I marked it this way, wherever my holes were. All right, so I made my marks like that. Then in the center, I just made my little holes. And actually, I use this because it has a wooden handle, but in my little kit, there is actually a little eyelet maker that came with it as well. So I'll use that one for this one. So basically, I just screw it you know, back and forth to make a hole. And this one is not as sharp as the one I have with my wooden handle. Okay. Now, the way the pieces go together, Omira uses a scrap of wood that lives in my sewing room. Wood is a good option as well. Um, these little mini cut and press boards, I have like five of them. So see, it's like the perfect... Oops, it's like the perfect little size. I use it for, you know, I use it as an iron stand, and then I use it to do my little whatever on this. Okay, so then the pieces go like this. So if you have a kit like this, um, it did come with instructions. Okay, so you get these little mini instructions. But basically the way it works is you need a post and a, like a little belly button for one side. Okay, it looks like, oops, looks like that. Make sure we can see what we're doing here. Let me get a little lighter. Okay, and then for the snap side, you need, let me use a different color so it's not so, I'll use gold because that'll be easy for you to see. Um, so you need a post and you need a, a little belly button. Okay, and then for the snap side, you need the snap, and you need the smooth back, and I don't have any more of the gold, oh yes I do, okay, you need this, okay, so, you know, if you were using this for, um, if you were using this in a way where you wanted to show the snap, so like let's say you were snapping the front of a jacket, this smooth shiny part is what would show on the right side of your jacket. Um, this is the inside of the snap, and then you have your post and your little belly button. So the other thing that comes with this little kit, which is really handy, is this little um, metal disc. And the cool thing about this metal disc is it works for both sides. So see this side with the little nub on there it's really cool because the hole in the bottom of the post sits in that nub like that okay so basically what you do is you put your oh and actually so this would go on the wrong side so let me do it the right way so this would be the wrong side like this and the little nub goes on like this and then we want to pound this down so it attaches. Oh, Mary says to use a um, Mary says to use a hammer with that punch. Let's try it. I've got my hammer right here, so let me just get that thing and try it. All right, I'm just going to try it over here. Uh, no. Yeah, this maybe this one's just yucky. Uh, no. All right, that is a good idea though. Maybe this one is just not. Maybe it's just tired. I don't know. Um. All right. So where's my? Uh oh, I, oh, I lost my little post. Let's just get another post here. All right, so I've got my post in the cup like this. Um, can you use multiple layers? That is a great question. Let's let's try that. Um, one thing that you can do, um, you can actually use um, a really firm interfacing 
and there are little plastic discs that are underneath the ready-to-wear one in the back to protect the fabric. So I am trying to think about things for that. All right, I'm going to do three layers. So I've got a hole, three layers. Let's see if that will work. So I'm going to put the, the, the post through three layers like this. You know, three layers of denim is pretty hefty. And I'm guessing you could even do more because you can see there's quite a bit of that post showing. Um, all right, so now I'm going to stick that in there like that. Now, to protect this rounded nub, we don't want to crush that. It comes with two metal um, things to use with your hammer. See, there's a hole in there and it fits right on top of there. So I can pound this now without crushing it. Oh, <laughs> everyone's going to whack it like I mean it. Um, yeah, all right, so. All right, so I've got three layers, and that's in there pretty good. All right, so there's my Audi, and then I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this. And I'll cut this, and we'll put three layers on the innie, too, or the snap part. So let me just, I'm going to try this one more time with the, I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to whack it like I mean it. Oops. Um, yeah, mine does not work with a hammer, Mary. But, I mean, I think it depends on what your your cutter looks like, and maybe mine, I think mine just is dull. But I mean, I can easily make a hole through two layers with, with this one. And actually, this came as a set with, it came with also a buttonhole cutter, and it came with a little apple-shaped piece of wood, which I lost. So um, this is a set I've had for a long time. So now in this case, I'm going to take my my little metal cup and I'm going to turn it over to the smooth side because we want to put this smooth edge um, against the, you know, on something smooth. So this is now going to be on the right side. Oops, sorry, right side. So again, I'm going to do three layers of denim like this. Okay, so you can still see the little post sitting there. Then you put the snap section, the, you know, the actual snap part on top. And we can't use this metal post on here because it will bend and, war and, and distort the metal snap. So you use the second one that's got the little skinny pin end so that gets inserted inside the hole like that and then you pound it okay and again that's on there pretty good okay so there's my snap and it snaps like that so on the right side you know if you were again if you were making something where you wanted it to show this is what would show. And you can buy snaps with all different kinds of flat heads with different styles. But, you know, basically that's what a snap looks like. And then on the inside it looks like that. And it comes apart like that. So the other reason why I'm gearing up my snaps is because after I get these projects going that I have started now, I'm designing a... Um, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but if you were to Google um, like fidget mats for uh, Alzheimer's patients or memory care patients, um, there's these little quilts you can make or little mats and they have things that you can, you know, zip or tie like shoelaces and, um, 
you know, different activities. And my mom is fiddling with all of her buttons on her bathrobes that I've made her. And I've had to re-sew buttons onto her bathrobe many times now because she'll sit there and she'll fiddle with them until they come apart. So I'm going to make a mat for my mom. And this mat is going to be geared towards what my mother's interests are. I've researched these mats, and a lot of them don't have parts that can come out, off. Like, many of them, their selling point is there's no buttons or snaps. For me, I'm going to be putting buttons and snaps on because that's what she likes to fiddle with. And her other activity that she really, it's almost like she makes um, tissue and paper towel art. She, you know, folds... Um, paper towels up in different shapes and you know tissues and she tears them and she does stuff with them so I'm envisioning I'll just show you here what I'm envisioning for this I'll just use the back side of this page to show you my mouse is not my mouse just decides sometimes it doesn't want to work okay all right, so let me just show you. So I'm envisioning, oops, um, let's see. So let's say I had, let's say this whole thing was the size of the mat. Let me get a little darker here. Okay, so I would, in the center, I am going to make like a little square, something like this. And it's going to have triangles that you can fold and unfold to cover it up and I think this will will be interesting for her because of her tissue art and in the middle there's going to be a little pocket you know so she could put tissues inside there and then over here I may have you know a triangle that's sewn onto the corner but there's big buttons that she can unbutton and button um, you know, and over here I might do, um, so these are buttons. And then, you know, over here I'll do something else. So maybe over here I'll have two rows of, you know, fabrics that then close to the inside, two strips, and then maybe there'll be snaps that she can unsnap and then open this section you know and over here I'll have something else like maybe over here it'll just be a big pocket that she can put things in and then maybe over here I'll do a zipper like maybe it'll either be a zipper or maybe I'll do eyelets with a shoelace that she can you know tie a bow with so it's going to be something like this that's got buttons snaps things that will fold and unfold so these triangles will be relatively thin fabric and she can fold it down you know in on itself maybe a pocket over here maybe something here um, so that's another project that I'm thinking about you know something for my mom um, to play with and it's it's to me I, I've been thinking about this for I want to say about a year now and when I started thinking about it, I thought, and this is just me and thinking about things, like I thought she might be offended or she might think it's childish. But then I realized, you know, watching her and how she works those buttons and those tissues, I, I think that's not the case. So, I mean, it, it took me a while to think that this would be a good idea for something that I could make for her. Um, Let's see. Oh, Pat says, I use dental floss to help keep buttons stay on longer for fidget mats. Also, a, a keychain type measuring tape was a big hit. Oh, like a little thing where she could pull out the measuring tape. That's a good idea. I like that. And I like the dental floss idea as well. Um, yay. I'm glad that you finally made it to less chaos finally I love that um, um, less chaos finally yay 
I love that name, and I'm happy you made it to a live. Thank you for joining me. Oh, Mary says don't give it to her. Just leave it where she can find it. That's a good idea. I don't want to make a big deal about it. Like, it's not a present. It's just something I'm going to um, leave. Um, yes, I agree with the both of you ladies. That is an excellent idea. I'm not going to... I don't want I don't want to make it seem like it's a thing. I want to just have it be there and she can discover it. I will tell you that my brother for Christmas last year bought her a little um it's a furry dog that barks and moves its head and wags its tail and makes noises and bats its eyes and she talks to it. So <laughs> my sister's going to get her a kitty cat to go with the dog this year and I'm going to I'm going to be making her one of these. Oh, it took a lot less. It took a lot to become less chaos. <laughs> well, I will tell you that I'm always looking for ways to simplify myself, so I totally understand you there. Um, yeah, so this is a peek at, a, at the next. You know, I'm working on the jeans. I'm working on... Um, you know, some other things that I already have started, but this is something else I am going to be fitting in. And I think what I'm going to do is make each section separate so it can go together in any configuration you want, and then it can be a pattern that people can use to make, you know, pick and choose which, which activities they like, and then they can put it together and make it for their own loved one. So it's going to be a, a pattern that I'll come up with... Um, for that purpose, so I want to make it customizable. Oh, Jerry says, pediatric occupational therapy used dressing vests for neurodiverse kids, similar techniques. I made a couple for my daughter's clinic. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I, um, yeah. Well, the other hope I have for this is if she has it, if she drags it onto her lap, I want to make it a little bit of a lap size because then she's also always freezing cold. So it'll, I think I'll put cotton batting and maybe a flannel backing on it so it's a little bit cozy. I mean, she's even cold in the summer because my parents have central air. So for my dad not to be miserable, my mom is always cold. So, um, but that is interesting, a vest. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, but anyway, so that's that's where we are. I am going to get off here today. I'm just going to continue to work on my jeans until I get them, you know, perfect. And then what I'll do is I'll post some pictures in our group to show you my final final. Then I can start working on the instructions because um, I am working with a couple pattern testers to fit them. And I'm... Um, I'm getting close to a final pattern shape. And one thing I did decide is, remember, the pattern... Oh, let me just show you this one more thing. Okay, so let me just show you one more thing, and then I'll be done. Okay, let me just get my, my mouse to work again. I don't know why. I have this fancy gaming mouse, and it decides that it does and does not want to work for me sometimes. Okay, so let me just back up here. All right, so let me just show you the shapes. Okay, so first of all, for this, you remember it's a one-piece top, and then it's got a bottom. I am going to make a low crotch curve, so for a low butt meaning this curve will be slightly below the crotch point. So I'm testing that. And then I'll have this one that will be for average um, full hips. So the pattern will come with, with both crotch curves. So you can it'll be easier for you to fit it onto you. Um, and then remember, I'm going to move my pocket over. Because you can see here, with the zipper seam allowance attached, it looks like I have all this room. But by the time you fold this under and get rid of it, it's too close for a um, fly stitching. So I'm gonna fix my pocket. I'm gonna, I have two different crotch shapes going. Okay, so that's that's that. And then I just wanna show you, 
I decided for ease of construction and to reduce bulk, it's a one piece pocket bag. So it folds like this in place. Okay, and then if you're working with a striped fabric, so you'll notice here, this fabric has essentially, it's a stripe. So to get that to be straight up and down, what I did was I positioned the bottom section of this section here is what I lined up with the grain. So your grain line will be straight with this, essentially. So this will be the grain line. So if you're working with a stripe, it will look straight even though the bottom folds on a diagonal. Okay, so I have that figured out. You know, and then because you've got the one piece pocket bag, um, you know, this gets sewn here. Okay, so this is your fabric facing. I'll just put one pin in it. So I am happy with this now. So see, then when it gets folded up, it covers that. Okay, so those are the new pocket pieces. And then the fly pieces look like this. So the, the, the right fly will be double. So you can either cut it on the fold or open it up and cut it flat like that. And then the little half piece looks like that. So those are what the new pieces look like. So I'm very, very close to finishing the pieces so I can start working on the instructions and you know I can start working on the final pattern pieces. So I am excited. It's just all of this stuff takes a long time. I think I'm going to get tons done in a day and I literally spend all afternoon you know fussing around with you know one aspect of what I'm doing. So anyway whew, this has been a fun Friday. Um, I hope you guys are um, you know, having a wonderful weekend. I want to thank anybody who is a veteran for their service, because um, yesterday was Veterans Day. Um, I was thinking about veterans all day yesterday because, you know, I have some friends whose parents are veterans, and, you know, it's just, yesterday was a very special day for a lot of people. We had a lot of special events in town. We had a parade, um, and I just want to thank anybody who's watching who's a veteran for their service. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And on Sunday, I will have a new Embroidery Sunday video because I ordered a 5x7 hoop for my brother embroidery machine and it finally came in. So I will do an unboxing and a, a little thing about the 5x7 hoop. And so that's Sunday. And then next week... We'll be off and running with whatever I'm going to be doing next week. I haven't thought about it yet, but um, I really appreciate you guys watching. And um, thank you for making Friday the best day of the week for me. I really, really enjoy getting together with you guys. So I appreciate it. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. And I will see you very, very soon. Okie dokie. Bye. Once I get my... Once I get my my mouse to work, I'm going to sign off. All right, there we go. All right, bye-bye, everyone. Have a great weekend.